Accident Granger meets relatives of accident victims and capacity building for city councillors. Welcome to InfoHub. It's Thursday, October 17. We have lots to tell you. Following a fatal accident on Tuesday, which claimed the lives of Herbert and Denise Josiah, GDF Sergeant Leon Tucker and his aunt Laverne Stobie, His Excellency President David Granger visited the relatives of the deceased to express his sympathy. The head of state was accompanied by Chief of Staff of the Ghana Defense Force, Brigadier Patrick West and Deputy Commissioner of Police Nigel Hoppy, who is performing the functions of Police Commissioner. Uh, say how sorry we are to all of you, the relatives, uh, about what happened. Just saying sorry cannot bring people back to life, we cannot reverse the pain and the suffering which I'm sure you all are going through now, and of course the pain of the persons who died or were hospitalized yesterday. Both Brigadier West and Deputy Commissioner Hoppy said support will be rendered to the families. The force has committed to providing some assistance from the force of the for the burial of his mother and father. We will also be supporting the wake the night before the funeral. All the material for the wake we will also provide. At, uh, by Monday, we will receive benefits from the city of Region from the funeral system program. The Ghana Police Force will ensure that we provide support in particular for the police rank who died. Um, while discharging his duty, we usually um, take care of the weight um, in its entirety. Also, you're going to be the beneficiary of some money that are allocated from members of the force to the guidelines sergeant. Four persons were killed on Tuesday when a police vehicle slammed into the car they were traveling in on the Friendship East Bank Demerara Public Road. Constable Ronald Barker, who was driving the police vehicle, also died in the tragic accident, while Lance Corporal Travis Fullington, who was with Constable Barker, remains hospitalized. Trisha London, who was in the passenger car, has since been released from the Georgetown Public Hospital. The head of state has assured that there will be an investigation into the cause of the crash. Persons are being urged to be on the lookout for scammers impersonating the Minister of Public Health, the Honorable Valda Lawrence, in an effort to solicit money. Speaking to InfoHub after a court appearance for a matter of this very nature, Minister Lawrence said several innocent persons have fallen victim to the hideous act. Person or persons have impersonated me and have been able to receive over $2 million from a very small phone vendor um, using my name. Um, the, the matter continues. I will have to come back to court. Here it is that a small vendor will have to pay that two million dollars to the company that company that he took credit from. There are other persons who have released monies to persons believing that it was me. I trust that persons out there would recognize that this is all a scam using my name, using my position as Minister of Public Health to take their monies from them. Please, should anyone call you or text you or send you a Facebook message asking you to send money to myself or any other minister, please do not do so. Ministers do not handle finances. Minister Lawrence said she is optimistic that a decision in the ongoing matter will be made at the next court appearance. She also assured all such complaints will be reported to the Ghana Police Force and investigated thoroughly. Still to come, GRDB touts benefits of rice flour and over 90 complete bid program in Essequibo. Details after the break. Daddy. Thanks for staying with us. The Ghana Civil Aviation Authority has reported that a small plane had crashed in an interior location around 7 hours 53 this morning. 
Director General of the Aviation Authority, Lieutenant Colonel Egbert Field, confirmed that the pilot, Captain Bernard Singh, survived the crash and a search and rescue team has been deployed to the site. According to reports received, the single-engine aircraft with registration 8RHAI belonging to domestic airways crashed this morning, moments after takeoff from Ariching in Region 7. At the time of the accident, the plane was shuttling cargo to Ikeruku. The GCAA has commenced investigations and promised to disclose more information as it becomes available. The Ghana Rice Development Board has embarked on its mission to increase awareness of the significant benefits and opportunities of its rice value chain. In this regard, several stakeholders were informed about the various opportunities that the gluten-free value-added rice flour has to offer. GRDB is now encouraging the development of value-added products and rice-based products to increase local product diversification, allow for the possibility for nutritional fortification, add value for farmers and millers, enhance marketability, value-added rice and rice-based products will also create employment and allow for a source of income to Guyanese. During her presentation, the Assistant Research Officer emphasized the benefits of rice flour and various products of the different blends. General Manager of GRDB, Nizam Hassan, said the board has spent several years on production-oriented research which have seen much successes. Over the last few years, we have been doing research on what we term downstream processing and value addition for rice. This is because this is an area that we deem very important and necessary for further development of the rice industry. In her feature address, the minister within the Ministry of Agriculture, the Honorable Valerie Adams Yearwood, take in her feature address, minister within the Ministry of Agriculture, the Honorable Valerie Adams Yearwood, applauded the initiative by the GRDB. The junior minister noted that with the new venture, the ministry hopes to put Guyana on a path that will encourage the development of value-added rice-based products. It is important to note that this venture will not only increase Guyana's local products, Guyana's local product diversification, but also allows the possibility for nutritional fortification. Today's showcase is a testament to government's commitment to further developing the industry by promoting research and development in areas such as the production of products and byproducts at all levels. Stakeholders took the opportunity to sample some of the edibles prepared with the blended flour. There were also other goods on display, promoting options for a healthier lifestyle. Kellen Rover for InfoHub. Councillors of the Mayor and City Council today participated in a booster training to build their capacity in local governance and accountability. Convened by the Ministry of Communities, the one-day meeting engaged councillors and administrators of the MNCC on their roles and responsibilities, even as the country repositions itself for a major transformation. Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Communities, Emil Magarel, said the training falls within the Ministry's mandate of building cohesive, empowered and sustainable communities. We recognize that building the capacity of our local organs, and in particular that of the city, becomes critical if we're gonna see the level of development which is described elsewhere by His Excellency in particular as having the good life. We believe that with knowledge and with the capacity built, Georgetown will become, would be able to be a livable, lively, lovely, city for both the residents and visitors. Councillors were called on to come together for the good of the council and the country as a whole. Deputy Mayor Alfred Mendur made the passionate plea. As we move towards realizing this stated vision, we must commit to working tirelessly to bring significant development to all. The good life, as my, 
as T.S. Bagarel spoke about, the good life, the better life promised by His Excellency. Hence, if we are going to give 80% today, we must be prepared to give 100% going forward. For InfoHub, Alexis Rodney. Next up, we meet two Essequibians, 45-year-old Yuli Alexander and 16-year-old Yogeshwari Lagan. Now, you might be asking what do these two persons have in common? We tell you all about them in this report. Yuli Alexander and Yogeshwari Lagan have the distinct honor of being among the most recent batch of the graduates to have completed training with the Board of Industrial Training in Essequibo. Alexander is a serving police officer and Lagan just recently completed her secondary education. Both decided to make good use of programs being offered by BIT and enrolled at the Essequibo Technical Institute for a six-month course in food preparation and electrical installation. Well, to be honest, I have a passion for food. I like to cook. I love to make cakes. Oh my, and you talk about it. I love to be in the kitchen. In the near future, I would form a group with young people and teach them what I have learned here. Uh, it was always my passion from like childhood to learn things in the mechanical field and electrical field. So after school, I came and pursued my dreams. I sent in an application at the Guyana Power Light Inc. to go to the training school in Sofia. Lagan said the six-month course was very instrumental in her decision on a career path. She added that several of her colleagues are now also empowered, having received their certificates and will shortly be seeking employment. Vice Chairman of the Board of Industrial Training, Donald Ainsworth, in his remarks to the graduates encouraged them to share their experiences with their peers. Regional Executive Officer for Region 2, Dennis Jaikaran, told the graduates that they possess the tools to develop themselves, families and communities, but reiterated that commitment must be applied for success. We have to answer in our minds the question of what do we do after this graduation exercise. And once you are prepared to answer that question, you are prepared to do two things. See work in the investment in you and be able to use the skills given to you in a most beneficial way. In all, 95 persons graduated from the Essequibo Technical Institute completing courses in electrical installation, food preparation, welding and fabrication, and heavy duty equipment. For the month of October, over 700 persons will benefit from the Board of Industrial Training programs. From the Essequibo Technical Institute with videographer Mahinder Raj, for InfoHub, I'm Ayanna George. Before we close, here is some vital information from the Guyana Elections Commission. GCOM's preliminary list of electors is now on its website, www.gcom.org.gy. Citizens are reminded to check the voters' list to ensure their names are on it, GCOM's claims and objection exercise began on October 1st and will end on November 18, 2019. During this time, the following persons can check the registration office in their respective districts to verify their registration records for inclusion on the list of electors. Persons who are 18 years or older or will become 18 by December 31st, 2019 and Guyanese citizens by birth, descent, naturalization or registration, and a citizen of a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for no less than a year before December 31st, 2019. Also, persons whose names appear on the central registrar can make changes or corrections during this period. GCOM's claims and objection exercise is being conducted at all GCOM offices throughout the country. That's all for today. Connect with us on WhatsApp, Facebook, and YouTube. Much more news is on our website, dpi.gov.gy, and pop over to Instagram for the latest photo updates at DPI Guyana. Your bridge and weather reports are up next. Goodbye for now.